over a period of time, uh, even though you're cleaning the tooth every time that you sharpen this thing, the stone is going to build up with residue. Uh, and somewhere along its life, you are going to need to clean this stone. This one's still not too bad. I can still see it sparkling. I don't know if you can, but I can see it sparkling still. So it's still reasonably clean. But after a while, that's going to come up with the residue. To, to clean this stone, inside your toolbox, there's a, a little cleaning stick, um, which is this little white fella here. All you need to do with that is put it up against the side of the grinder like that. Place your thumb on top of the stone and then with your other hand rotate the stone. And you can see when, when you first start this dust will come out as a bit of a black colour but after, after you started to turn it for a few short turns you'll find that it's starting to clean up and change colour. Once you're back to that lighter brown colour that's ready to go again. Do not fit this grinder up where it goes on the machine, turn it on and then grab this stone and start going like that to clean your stone. If you, if you do that, one, you're going to wear it out excessively and two, you're going to misshape that stone. Once you've misshaped that stone, it's going to be very hard to be, for you to grind because you're not going to have a nice flat surface to be grinding on. Once you've taken the saw guard off and you're ready to, to fit the grinder, it's just a simple matter of, of placing the, the grinder into its bracket, doing up the wing nuts like so. These, these grinders are all factory set, so, so if you pick this up from you know new, this grinder should already be set for you. But over a period of time, um, and or if you play with any of the alignments on this sawmill, you will find that you need to reset the grinder. There's a, there's a few simple things that you should be doing. Two things that you're setting on this. One of them is the hook angle, and the other is that this, this grinding stone here needs to be square with the saw blade. So what we'll do first is we'll, we'll set this one up so it is square to the saw blade. To check that your saw blade's square with the grinder, it's, it's a pretty simple matter of just simply undoing this nut here, turning the stone up like so, doing that up again, bringing it back down into its position and, and, and to do that you may have to loosen the wing nut off again. Tighten it up, make sure it's where you want it to be and then grab yourself a little square, a little builder square, an engineer square, whatever you've got. Place that square over the or underneath the stone like that and when you put that up against there you can see now that it's touching at the bottom but it's not touching at the top there. So, so this, this grinder is out of square compared to the saw blade. To adjust it, just simply come around to the back here, a 13mm, or an 8mm bolt with a 13mm head. Well, it's just a simple matter of putting that on there and loosening it off. Don't loosen it off too much, you don't want it flopping all over the place. Just, just loosen him off so that you can still move it. Put your, your square back down there and move it around until you've got it sitting square. Then just do that up, nip it up first, bring it back on there and check it. That's pretty good there. Lock her up. Now that's now square with your saw blade. You do have to remember to turn it back over the other way. Otherwise it won't cut too well. The other one that you need to look at is the hook angle. To, to, to set your hook angle up, it's just a simple matter of bringing the saw blade down, or the tooth, down onto the stone. When you, when you bring that down onto the stone, you can see with this one it's, it's touching at the heel, but she's not touching up on the tip of the tooth. So to adjust that, all I need to do is undo this wing nut here, and just wind this in or out depending on which way I want to go. So I wind this, I want to lower this wheel down so I wind it in which allows it to come down like so and I just keep going down until the whole tooth is, is touching on the stone. Uh, then just simply screw that one up again, lock it in nice and tight 
And that, that should be good to go now for that saw's entire life. What I do do though, is when I've, when I've worn this saw down to the point where I can't grind anymore, because, and that's, at the point you need to send it away to be re-tipped, is when you get to the point where the, the grinder is grinding into your gullet area back here. At that point, you'll take the saw blade off, you'll send it off to a, a good reliable saw doctor, or you'll use the re-tipping kit that we manufacture here that, and re-tip your tooth. When you put your next tooth saw on, I also like to just check my hook angle. I won't touch, now I've set this, I won't touch that hook angle again now until I put a new saw blade on. When I put the new saw blade on, I'll just have a quick check of that and make sure that the angle's still the same. If it's slightly different, I'll, I'll reset it at that point there. So, a l couple of minutes before you grind, just to get in there with the pocket knife and, and scrape away all that residue will save you a few dollars on diamond wheels. So I plug this in, the red, I put this onto the battery, uh, the red one goes on the positive. Now that you've plugged her all in and you're good to go, it's just a matter of turning her on, bringing the, the stone or the cutter down onto the tooth and working your way across, right across from one side to the other like that. And, and sharpening it up. However, a lot of people make the mistake, when you bring that up there now, you can see that it's got a nice shiny face. Um, it's not, it hasn't quite touched just down the bottom here, but all the rest of it's been ground away. A lot of people will say to, them, say to themselves, now that's sharp, uh, and they'll do the next one. Where, and that's not quite right. What you have to do to sharpen this saw is you have to grind it away until you have removed that rounded edge that's on the tip. And it's never going to be sharp until you get rid of that rounded edge. That's still quite blunt. When I, when I bring this back down on here now, if you have a look at it, you will see, even though it's shiny underneath there and I've ground some already, you will see a gap in between the stone and the cutter. Now what you have to do, that gap or little dark shadow line is is the, the shadow that's being cast from that rounded edge on the tip. You need to grind this away until that shadow line has disappeared and you have a nice, clean, crisp line between the stone and the cutter. So we'll sharpen this up, moving right across the whole face, just taking care that you don't drop off the edge until you have removed that dark shadow line and you've got a nice, clean, crisp line like we have there now. That thing's ready to go. And when you bring your finger up to it, you should be able to... It should grab your fingerprint or your finger as you run your, when you run your finger over it now. And that's, that's good. That's really nice. Next one. Bring it down. Always move them from one side to the other. Don't hold the stone in one place. And just keep going until that black shadow line or that shiny strip disappears. It's going there now. The other one that you will have occasionally is chips. You will see chips in your teeth. Uh, if you've got a chip in your tooth, do not try and grind all the chip out in one go. Just work away at that tooth as you would the rest of them. Just cleaning up that worn rounded edge and, and eventually you'll grind back to the point where you grind that chip out of it. If you're missing the whole tooth, if you've hit nails or something like that, if the tooth is completely broken away and all you have left is the, the saw blade seat, um, I suggest you take that saw blade off and send it away to be re-tipped. If, however, when you hit something foreign like a nail or, or a horseshoe or an axe head, whatever it is, uh, if, you, if you only break the tooth off and there's still a little bit of tungsten sitting back, a rough piece of tungsten sitting back on the tooth, um, you could leave that there and continue to cut with four teeth or five teeth just to get as much as you can out of the saw blade. It's not going to perform as well, 
but, but you will be able to still use that plate. But, but if there's no tungsten left on there and it's just raw seat, um, the more you use that blade, the more work you're going to create for the saw doctor to re-tip it because he's going to have to build that seat up as it wears. Once you've done that, once you've ground all the teeth to the, to the point where they're nice and sharp, just a matter of undoing that, disconnecting the power, placing the saw guard back on it, 